What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are going to do some more building today. Kind of a theme with my uh, live streams here, but hey, got to do what you know, right? Let's share this over to Facebook. Uh, create posts. Uh, let's just post it. Screw it. All right, live now. We're gonna say posts. All right, cool. So we got that going, and all right, fellas and ladies. Let me dump this audio down a little bit. Let's get YouTube up on the monitor. Of course, point you guys up here while I'm doing it. No harm. Let's get this going here. Hoping everybody is doing good today. It is, what's today, Tuesday? I just got done with a uh, another little job interview with uh, the company I was with, Benefit Focus, in Charleston for some remote work. So that's awesome, I'm excited about that. Let's just get in here to the studio. This is where the link to this uh, live stream is gonna pop up. All right, so now I just have to wait. So I'm gonna leave this up at some point here. The uh, stream will pop up and I can grab the link and then uh, I can throw it out on Facebook, see if anybody wants to join us. Um, all right, let's get this thing turned around here and framed up. All right, cool. So I've been working on this, uh, probably only have about maybe, I don't know, maybe like two hours into this one. Um, basically just figuring out how to fit everything. So, um, and I actually, uh, I went, I made a little change. I was planning on putting this into a, um, into the removable arm version of this frame, of this three inch mini alien frame. Um, because I like the idea of being able to change the arms. Um, but, what I realized was two things. The main thing was the removable arm frame, and this is gonna to be tough to see. Let me bring the light over real quick. See if I can see this. Wibbly. Everything's fine. Nobody panic. Um, the removable arm version of this frame, basically the prop line has to drop. I mean, this is true about any removable arm um, frame, but the prop line drops down a little bit below the um, below the uh, the actual base plate. So I'm basically losing two millimeters on the prop line, uh, which on a micro, I think is is much more um, of, a, of a problem than with a five inch rig. Five inch rig have naturally taller motors um, and taller props and taller everything. Uh, so it's not much of an issue with them, but on these micros, I'm starting to think that it, it really is. And let me show you what I mean, right? So I actually built a version of this frame like this, where the arms are inside or above um, the actual base plate. And that is this guy right here. And this is hands down the best flying micro that I have ever built, um, as backed up by pretty much everybody. I want to say like six, maybe seven people flew um, a battery on this at the, uh, the Get FPV meetup on Saturday. And like nobody could believe how good this thing flew, myself included. Um, and I think one of the things that's really helping is that this is the, and, and here, let me take a step back. So this is what I'm talking about, right? So the base plate is down here, and then you've got your arm. I think it's a three mil arm. So your base plate where the camera and the, the gear in the back, the VTX and the receiver sit, and then a three mil lift for the arm, and then the um, that little X plate, but that doesn't matter, right? So the base plate to the arm, We've got a three millimeter rise um, and then the motor. And what that does is that brings the prop line up higher than I've ever been able to get it on a micro. So when you look at a five inch, what you'll realize is the prop line is pretty much even with this top plate. Um, and this is the first time that's ever happened for me with one of these micro alien builds. 
Um, so that's pretty slick, and uh, I am guessing, taking an educated guess, because um, I've built an awful lot of these and flown an awful lot of these, that um, that is one of the reasons why this rig is flying so well, is that higher prop line. And of course, we've got, we're going to have like a 40 to 60 gram battery up on top here. Um, so when, but, 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 this only has a regular FPV cam. Uh, in doing so, I only basically gave myself like 15 millimeters to fit the ESC and the flight controller in, and the, the most slammed flight controller and ESC I've been, ever been able to do is actually this, which is 12 to 13 millimeters. Um, that is absolute bare minimum uh, to have a flight controller that doesn't have wires touching it, uh, is able to move around freely, which is really important on the soft mounting. Um, and uh, so when I wanted to build one with HD, because this is more of a proof of concept, um, when I wanted to build one with HD, the obvious solution is just to flip the frame over, right? Instead of building it like this, where I'm, I'm eating up from the base plate, I'm eating up three millimeters here, two millimeters here, so I'm losing five millimeters with it oriented this way. The easy answer is to flip the frame. So now we've got base plate, 25 mil standoffs, and we can start our stack right down here on the base plate. But like I said, I'm losing this two or so millimeters. I'm lowering my prop line, which is the opposite of what I want. I want to be either having my prop line dead flat on where everything is being mounted and where the standoffs are being mounted, or um, I want to move the prop line up like I did by flipping the frame over. So with the frame like this, I realized it's not a great idea, but that I had a um, unibody. Uh, version of this mini alien of this three inch mini alien so that's what I moved over to I, I was gonna hold on to this um, and use it for something else but I realized that it is a really good candidate for this build um, it's also a um, it's it's a little bit lighter it's a few grams lighter it's it's kind of super interesting right so the one of the philosophies behind removable arm frames over uh, unibody frames is obviously that you can replace the arms. That, that, that's a big one. But on micros, right, where you're not carrying a lot of weight, um, this will pretty much never break. Th this unibody frame, which is three millimeter thick carbon, this really won't break. I will have to work extremely hard, and I don't, I don't know if I've ever broken one that's that's been three mil. Um, so the the strength kind of goes out the window. But here's what's interesting, right? On a removable arm frame, you've got some hardware. You've got at least four pieces of hardware to hold the arms in. This particular design then uses the um, uh, the stack mount bolts as the second connection point on the arms to prevent the arms from wobbling, which first and foremost, I don't love that. I, I don't love sharing, um, sharing bolts that go through the arms with the stack. I've always felt like there's a chance that that can pull uh, But what's super interesting, right, the flip side of that is, yes, you gain some weight from this hardware, but what you can do, and it's, it might be hard now that you can totally see it, you can reduce the thickness of the center section, uh, mainly because it doesn't take much stress, right? Most of the, the, the arms are these big long levers, so when they take a hit, well, I mean, most of the time you're going to hit on an arm, right? Because like any, pretty much any orientation other than completely flat um, inverted where it's going to hit the battery, every other orientation is going to hit an arm. So most of the force in hard hits is taken up by the arms. So the, the center canopy area doesn't really need to be all that strong. So it's kind of interesting, right? The, the extra hardware adds weight, but then being able to thin out the center section saves weight. And I believe on five inch rigs, um, don't quote me on this, but I believe on five inch rigs doing this going to removable arm setup and thinning out the center section It might actually save weight over a unibody um, Like I said, don't quote me on that, but that that might be true in this case This unibody design is actually lighter. I guess because the center canopy area is, is pretty small, right? All things considered um, This is a couple grams lighter here the unibody rig. So it, it, it's kind of funny, right? Like I get this much thicker um, center section uh, on the unibody, which is obviously going to be much stronger. 
um, but it's also lighter. The only flip side being, like I said, is obviously you can't remove the arms. If I manage to break this base plate, I have to swap the entire thing out. I have to pull all the electronics out of it um, to get it working again. Whereas on this guy, I just pop a couple screws out, rip the arm out, replace it, um, and away we go. Um, so yeah, in, in, in this case, in this build, I don't think that is enough of an advantage um, because again, I have yet to break one of these three mil mini aliens. Um, so yeah, we'll go with this frame. I just feel like it's a, it's a, yeah, it is CB3. You got it. Um, yeah, I think this is a better choice. Uh, again, mainly because of the raised, um, the increase of uh, prop line from this being a, you know, uh, the, the base plate and the standoffs are going on the same plane as the motors are going to be mounted to. Um, but also due to the uh, little bit extra weight. So this is what we're building. I'm going to save this removal arm, fancy looking uh, color shift spray painted one for another kind of experiment that I'm doing. Um, basically what I'm going to do with it is, so I built this one on the removable frame, removable arm CB3 frame, um, and this has the 1306 motors. I'm going to build this one on 1304 motors, the RCX 1304 motors, um, which I have now in 4000 kV. Um, and these 1306s here are 4000 kV as well, I believe. I don't think they're 4100, nah, 4000 kV. So I'm gonna build these two to be identical um, and I'm gonna see if the, the extra stator, if the 06 is really that much of a benefit over an 04 stator since all other things will be equal. I'll put the same, I'll get it to the same weight, same everything. Um, it'll literally be just a, a, a contest between a 1306 and a 1304 um, to see, essentially if the 1304s have enough jam um, at 4,000 kV. My guess is that there's gonna be a real difference. I've actually flown these 1304s on three inch props on a very similar frame to this before. Um, and they just didn't have quite enough grunt for the three inch props. Beautiful on two and a half inch props, although the 5,000 kV is the one to have on a two and a half inch prop. Um, but uh, it's worth a try, right? The only way that, that you can truly know for sure is to get back to back with a, a very similar, if not identical build. Um, and that's really what I'm trying to do more of lately. Um, I haven't really had the means or the amount of gear to do these head-to-heads like this. I've had to do a build and then, um, oops, sorry guys, I've had to do a build and then, uh, you know, fly it as much as I can and then as quick as I can make the change and then go out a day or two later and fly it to try to get a, um, to try to get a feel for which one is which. Um, whereas now, now that I've accumulated a lot more parts, uh, I am able to do some head-to-heads to, by building two identical rigs. And that's just so much of a better, um, more accurate comparison. And yeah, I mean, when we're looking for that last 1%, that's important. And it looks like the link is up here, so hang with me one second. Well, I'll do this again. I'm gonna get this over onto Facebook, see if anybody over there um, wants to hop over. So let's get in here and drop the link in. And we will say, we are live. All right, cool. See if anybody else wants to come hang out. All right. So let's just get to it. Um, I'm also going to pull up the actual window on the computer so that you guys can start asking questions. I saw, I just happened to see the one comment um, by glancing over at my phone screen, but it makes it so much easier when I pull it up on the computer monitor, which is nice and big. There we go. Yo, Luke, what's up, brother? <laughs> I hope you're still in here, Luke. Um, Hey, hit your, uh, hit your text messages. I asked you a question or two. I forget what they were. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I was asking you which um, Predator camera of those two or three that I let you borrow um, that you want to keep. Um, yeah, keep that one if you don't mind, if you can shoot the other two back because I actually need one of them for 
this that I've been talking about. Um, I want to use one of them um, to match up this build with the other one I'm going to do so that uh, they both have predators which are the same weight. Right right now this has, oh no, I did put the predator in it. Yeah, so the, the um, unless unless the predator is the one that you picked, I, I think you might have a red one and a black one, maybe just the black one, whatever. Whichever one you want, keep that one because um, I think we traded motors um, for one of the cameras. Um, fire the other ones back to me so that uh, I can bash the living hell out of them. Um, is the music a volume okay, guys? I have it right around um, my normal kind of setting, so it should be okay. But uh, just to check, uh, EK Ripper, yeah, CB3 frame, uh, flying these exclusively since I got my setup dialed. Five inch are just sitting for now. Little guys are great for the summer. Parks are full of people. Man, that is the absolute truth. Predator 3 in black. I, I, I had a feeling you'd like that one. Hey, did, were you able to get the blue cast out of it, Luke? Um, if not, let me know. I was just able to uh, to get it out of mine. EK Ripper. Hey, what uh, what's your name on Facebook? Are we are we friends on Facebook? I'm, I'm constantly trying to connect people's... Uh, um, I'm constantly trying to connect people's uh, YouTube handles with their Facebook names. Um, so yeah, let me know on that one. Doing things off camera, guys. Stand by. Oh. It's well my way, it's daytime, so I can actually match the outside. And I need a little bit more brightness than that. All right, cool. Uh, the other is the red with the super wide lens. I think that's that's not a predator, right, Luke? I think that's the uh, the 16 by nine one. The um, what's it called? The monster. That's called the monster, I think, is the other red one. So you, so I, I only gave you two uh, Foxier cameras, right? It wasn't three, Luke. I'm sure this is just a riveting conversation for everybody that has no idea what we're talking about. So I will cut that short. Stop talking directly to Luke and build. So uh, the Tarsier annoyingly uses little star. There's no way to focus. Um, they use little star screws which is just infuriating. Uh, but luckily, an M.9 uh, will just barely grab them. So if I'm nice and gentle, I will not strip these out. And I got three of them out, and here's the fourth. Uh, the reason I'm taking this back apart is I want to swap in the shorter, uh, the, the shorter Tarsier cable. I bought this Tarsier off of Andy um, Baumgartner, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, and um, either it came with or he put on the uh, the longer cable, and this is a hell of a tight build, so I'm just minimizing every single little thing that I possibly can. So let's pop this off of here, and so there's the two sensors. I'm assuming that the 16x9 sensor is the HD sensor. And the 4x3 is um, the 4x3 is the FPV cam. Yeah, that's true, Luke. That is weird. But you've always flown 4x3 cameras, so I guess it's just straight up like you're used to them. Um, and unless you go 16x9 on all of the um, on all your 5-inch cameras, it would be a real pain in the ass to uh, adjust back and forth. So let's be super, super, super careful with this. I'm trying to pop this connector off here. And let's go in here with some real thin tipped um, um, I don't know what these are called. Things. I forget words when I'm doing these live streams. It's very odd. Um, Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to have to take that foam off, but that's okay. Let's get this plugged in first so that we can get the uh, the camera back pieced together. And hopefully not scratch these sensors on anything like a dummy. And this is... One of the problems with working on micros, it's like everything is so small and fiddly. You gotta be so careful. 
Like, for example, I want to just pinch this on the other side. You guys can't see. Is, let's get you rotated around here like this. See how that is. Um, I just want to reach around the other side of this and push this thing in, but that's where the sensor is. So I'd be putting my finger directly on the sensor, which obviously is bad. So... Just being as careful as possible. That might have been it. I think that was. Yeah, that seems to have sat down nicely. There it goes. Okay, just felt the click. So that's good to go now. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Oh, wow, lots of comments. Uh, being fl been flying the Harry? What's the Harry? H E R I. The Heli? Um, e K, old man, don't have social media. Let's chat. Three inch team out props. What are you liking? Oh man, um, <laughs> not many. <laughs> Three inch team out props are a real shit show right now. Unfortunately, the um, if if you have a motor with enough KV, the Gem Fan Wind Dancer thirty twenty three thirty twenty eight. I forget which one it is. Um, is good. Is it's a good choice. But, man, is it flimsy. Um, it's well-balanced, which is great, but so, so, so fragile. Um, other than that, if you can find them, the GemFan 3035s, um, which are on here, are really, really good. Uh, they're also pretty fragile. This is an old, old, old prop. Um, this is probably a three-plus-year-old prop. Um, but it's really good. Uh, so if you can find them, I think you might be able to snag some on Amazon. Um, they're really good. Other than that, everything goes hot. Well, the, so the HQ props, I am not a fan of. They are, uh, they've just not been balanced for me at all. Um, so I can't deal with running those anymore. On a non-HD rig, I don't think it matters, uh, and they are the toughest prop. They don't have the the feel of these gem fans or the um, or the wind dancers uh, in terms of like for freestyle. For you know, if you're looking for really um, if you're looking for really fine adjustments on things like elevation, you want to skim the ground, stuff like that. A lower pitch prop um, has much more feel there. But um, durability is real. I mean, durability is a real big factor with which props you go with. Um, so that's a tough one, man. It's uh, I, I wish more. I, I, I'm I'm very encouraged by the way that they made the wind dancers um, work on the M5 nut or on the T mount. Um, what I'm doing right now is trying to peel this little piece of foam off here. Um, off the, the previous cable that was on it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that moving forward, three inch props will be either T mount or um, uh, M5. Because, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's kind of silly for, those, for prop manufacturers to have to design two molds, um, or to have to have two molds made, I should say. Uh, one for team out one for I mean hell we have enough trouble with having enough people that fly micros as it is the last thing we need is to limit it even further by having two totally separate prop um, combinations right or, or prop um, mounting setups so yeah I mean for me that's really it the the 3035s or the um, uh, or the the wind dancers, both of which are gem fan props. Gem fan for me has always made a prop that's well balanced. Um, I cannot say the same thing about HQ. If your rig is not, I mean, if you're not looking for the absolute ultimate in smoothness or the absolute ultimate in in mid to low throttle control, the HQ props are incredibly durable, and I mean, like I said, that's a big thing. Uh, but I am trying to get a micro HD rig that will um, that will just have as little jello as possible, and 
has to do that. I mean, this is this is what I've had to do to do that is is literally rule out props that aren't perfectly that aren't the best balanced options available. Um, I was super bummed out. The I, I always thought Azor props were been flying their five inch props and their three inch M5 props. I I always assumed that they were well balanced. Um, but I learned recently that they really aren't. They came out with 2540 props, and they were not well balanced at all, which made me kind of rethink their props. I went back and flew their 3060 props, and they were very not balanced. Um, I, I, I broke all their 5-inch props, so I haven't been able to test those again. But, um, yeah, that was... <sighs> Shit, let me just strip this out. Um, that sucked. Yo, Ben, how are you, man? Uh, so, I was talking earlier about these being star screws for no good reason, and but that this M.9 was just barely fitting them and not stripping them out. Uh, but for some reason, screwing this back in gave me a little bit of resistance, and then it started stripping. So this head is now partially stripped, so now the fun really begins. Hopefully you guys can see what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, that's good. So let's get this out of here, and I'm gonna see if I have any uh, Allen screws that are of this same size that I can use for this guy to get it back together. So that's good. That's out of there. Should the only thread should be in the front of the camera case. So this should just yeah. There we go. All right. So let's get this into a safe place here. Because the last thing I need is to be getting dust under this sensor. And now let's get this out of here and let's see what I got. All right. Behind on comments. Uh, Hero two lens in the HS. 1177 style before you got into micro cams. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're, you're used to those full-size cams. You're not going to... That's going to be way... Way too much of an adjustment. Um, to go to a 6x9 micro. And I just lost that screw. Whatever. Probably not going to use it anyway. Uh, EK says, 3x3x3 three by three by three are meh. Doesn't handle prop wash well. Yeah, they don't handle prop wash well because they're heavy as hell. Um, oh, 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 the Avans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Avan 3-inch props. They've been really decent. Um, yeah, they're a lot lighter. Again, just like the Gem, the, the 50, uh, 50, Jesus. Just like the Gemfan Windancer 3023s and these Gemfan 3035s. They're lighter, so they eat prop wash. Big, big, big difference. The weight of a prop uh, when it's a micro prop. Uh, ben says he's been ripping the whoop. Keep going, brother. Keep pounding those batteries, man. You're going to get there. More and more comfortable. It's fun. Six batteries, some spares in the mail already. Yeah, with whoops, just buy tons of batteries. Get um, get the batteries to the point where um, you can fly and charge and have no downtime. Like by the time the ones that are done charging are ready to go, you're done flying the fresh ones, and you can get into a little cycle where you can literally fly forever. Just keep the charger going at all times. Um, that's kind of the the jam when you're starting off just to be able to put time in uh three inch prop that's super light and responsive basically a three inch uh s3 yeah that is the uh wind dancer and the 3035 for sure um i think those avan props are a little bit heavier um but yeah that's gonna be your batman that's uh you're right on target what you're looking for is is the right are the right things to be looking for uh luke is asking where Harry Potter, my cat is, and that's a good question. Let's go visit him. You guys can also see the uh, the new place here in Atlanta. Come on, come unplugged. Come on, there we go. I'm just gonna leave it on the tripod. Luke, you haven't seen the uh, the new place. Oh yeah, Ben, I'm totally going for sure. I will absolutely be there. Um, you mentioned there's a free, um, you have a free pass. If that, if nobody snags that, there is a tiny chance that I might. I really doubt it though. Um, Kristen's car has a noisy wheel bearing in the driver's side front. Um, I know that most of the corners on that racetrack, most of the fast corners are loading up the passenger front, so I should be okay, but um, I just don't want to chance it. 
But uh, yeah, for uh, anybody that hasn't seen the new place here, here at B, um, we were super into this place because of how open it kind of is. Like that's a den, that's really a spare bedroom, but um, it's got these amazing double-ish French doors. Um, so if I'm doing a live stream and Kristen's out here watching TV or if she needs to get on a call for work or vice versa, uh, we can just close those doors and have privacy between there and out here. Or when we're just hanging at night, leave the doors open, I can just kind of roll back and see what she's watching on TV. She can hang here on the laptop. It's just really nice to be able to feel like we're with each other, um, even though we're doing our separate kind of hobbies. Um, and then, yeah, got most things kind of going. Um, got to get the artwork situation figured out. I think we're going to put our big ass um, uh, mid century mod mirror here uh, in front of the weirdo fireplace thing. Um, that lamp will probably live there. It's kind of a decent spot for it. And the answer to your original question is on the top of his cat tower. Look at that grumpy boy. Look at that grumpy boy. What's up, homie? Good dude. That's what a good dude looks like right there. Friend for life. Oh, 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 oh. Get him, 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 get him. Ugh. Love you, buddy. Be good. Get some sleep. Um, what else can I show you guys? Eh, that's pretty much it. Just get it all set. World's weirdest bathroom. Look at this nonsense. Look, there's a door here and then a sink. And there's another door, which I took off. And then this weirdness, look how shallow this is. It's like nothing. This shower is a million years old. Another door, and then another sink, and then a closet, and then another door, and our bedroom. Strangest, strangest, strangest goddamn um, bathroom ever. But I digress. Let's get back to work, what do you say? Oh, it's funny, the delay on the computer is showing me walking back into the office, that's funny. All right, so, let's get this back fired up. Uh, Luke, thanks, man. Uh, do, 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 do. Hey, Ben, are you driving um, on Friday, on Thursday, or are you just driving the, um, the Red Bull truck down and uh, doing promotional stuff? Uh, Spintech 1304 is no personal experience with them, EK, uh, but people that I trust have said that they're absolutely awesome and the thrust tests show them being awesome. Uh, what I don't know is durability. Um, the RCX motors are a known quantity. They are known to be very, very durable, um, and the RCX 1304 is especially. Um, the Spintex, you know, that's not a known quantity. I'm not saying that they're not, uh, but according to the, uh, the thrust tests, they only make a little tiny bit more power than the RCX 1304s. Not these, these are the 1306s, but um, yeah, the Spintex only make a tiny little bit more power, and they are, um, uh, they cost a bunch more. The, the RCXs are eight bucks a motor, and I think the Spintex are like 15 per, um, which, I mean, that's a total deal breaker for me. Unless they're making a bunch more power, there's no way I'm gonna spend more money on an unknown quantity. Trailering the Miata, Ben, very cool. Shit. Can we two-driver it? Can we sign up for two different, um, like intermediate and advanced and, and two driver it or something. I, there's actually three. There's intermediate, medium, and advanced. Um, I've done track time before. I wonder if um, if we can stagger ourselves and two driver the damn thing. If, if you're not afraid of it blowing up, I would be afraid of it overheating. Um, but I wonder, I wonder. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, what was I doing? Figure out. I put the the folk tape on. Oh 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 no! Yeah, I gotta find screws for this. Okay, yes. Let's do that. I gotta find um, uh, screws that are gonna work in there. So 
I am going to hit my little stash here. Let's take a look at what we got. So this is what we're comparing it to, or trying to replace, I should say. Don't mind the mess. I have this kind of laid out in a way that I'll know. I had to really scope out, um, oh yeah, something I stopped talking about that I do need to talk about is how the hell I'm going to get four boards to fit under 25 mil standoffs. Um, of course, I could just keep going higher and higher and higher on the standoffs, but we were talking before about the prop line, um, and I really don't want to um, sacrifice the prop line um, because of the HD. So. I spent a bunch of time previous to this stream laying out these three boards, the, I'm sorry, the four boards, because the Tarsier is a double stack, and then the ESC and the Talon F7. Um, I tried every different orientation of those three boards to slam them down as low as possible um, to clear the, um, the 25 mil standoffs, hopefully. Not hopefully, it, it does clear them now. Um, so... That is something I forgot to mention earlier. So let's see what we can find in the bucket of screws. That's a Phillips head, which is a hell of a lot better than a star head. So that's a tiny little bit longer. That might work, or it might break the case from being too long. Let's keep digging to see what we can find. Um, and this looks to be some sort of a... Uh, I guess I'll try those. Find some more of those. Uh, this is a, uh, a more open pitch than most of them. I think most of these are machine thread. I think that's the tight pitch. And then these are, I don't know, something else? Non machine thread? <laughs> hey, Ben, uh, the that motor's coming out. That motor that. Um, was in the Miata's coming out and it's getting replaced by a, um, basically a junkyard motor this week. So, um, there's that. Cheaper than rebuilding is basically the end of the, the decision there. Nerdcopter, who is Nerdcopter? Greets geeks, plus one from a rare visitor. What's up, man? How are you? <laughs> Uh, redid the whole computer uh, cooling system so it's untested. In theory, it could get the two sorted tomorrow and come out Thursday. I wish, man. I, I, I am. Uh, I have to be really careful with money. Nothing, um, nothing unnecessary right now because the uh, yeah, I just don't have a job locked down yet. And the the auto shouldn't be super expensive, but it's probably going to be like two grand that I don't necessarily have. So, um, yeah, I just got to wait. Just got to be patient. Hey, the track is like a half an hour for me. So, you know, I can, uh, I can go to it whenever I want. All right. So let's see, let's try to screw this in, um, and see if it bottoms out, uh, before getting tight. I need a tiny little Phillips head for that. Find it here off camera. Let's see what we got here. So something I noticed a minute ago when I was trying to put the other ones back in is that getting the screw halfway down and it's finding resistance from somewhere. Let me try this. Let me make sure I'm not putting this back plate on upside down. Ah, uh, hell, I could, you know, the back plate is not directional. It can't be. Maybe I'm putting this on wrong. Maybe I'm putting the front piece with the lenses on wrong. Let's try that. Don't think it really matters. They appear to be the same lens. But just never know since you don't get any instructions with any of this stuff. Alright, so let's see what happens. Now it's doing the same thing. I guess when it hits the um when it hits the other thread it hits the threads of Yeah, that's what it's doing. Like as soon as it hits the um threads of the front piece of plastic, it's finding resistance. So let's just plow through it now that we're not using an Allen or a star. And we're good. Right, so that's 
to go in. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it tightens. It appears to be okay. Uh, it didn't go totally flush. But... I don't know. Um, keep firing those questions over, guys. Been some really good ones so far. just not, it's not going really totally flat. Well, now that that's on, and this is lined up a little bit better, maybe these other ones will drop in there without, um, without stripping out. Let's try this. Yeah. Let me get out of here too. Get out of here! Right, let's see what happens here. So it's, I can feel it threading through the back plastic, and I can feel when it hits the PDB. Oh yeah, this one's way better. Oh yeah, there's like no resistance, no resistance, and... Whoop. Let me just let go of the last little second there. So let's see, yeah, and that one did drop down a little bit farther. Oh, I can't believe I don't have a, a star head small enough for this. This is really annoying. Let me just make sure I don't. I do have a bunch. And all these, all these torxes that I have are, uh, are bigger. Yeah, is that frustrating? This is a T5. I think this is the smallest I have. T5. Let's see. That's a T6. So T5 is the smallest I've, I've got, and it's nowhere near small enough. That sucks. I guess it's a T4. Uh, which I don't appear to have. But, such is life. Um, that one went in there pretty good. Let's just try it. See the Phillips one. seems okay. I mean, it doesn't seem to be... Let's go to Phelps ones, because these, these star ones are going to strip out for absolute certain. Um, hell, that one might be stuck in there at this point. So, I mean, we might be totally screwed already. But, uh... It'll probably work with three. <laughs> or maybe it's not stripped. See, this one's doing the same thing. It's, it's getting really tight about halfway through. Let me check the threads against one another. And it certainly looks like they're the same thread pitch. Interesting. Well, let's keep going with the Phillips. Just because I know I'll have less of an issue with them uh, in the future. Uh, so who's got micro build questions, man? These things are impossible to build. What, uh, what are you guys having trouble with? What, um, what's going on? Or, uh, head tuning questions. I've been learning a ton, um, talking to and, um, keeping up with Mark Spatz's, uh, Betaflight PID tuning, filter tuning, uh, series that he's doing right now with one of the uh, Bucks County FPV guys, uh, fresh uh, rigs. It's a uh, Catalyst Machine Works, something or other. Forget which, um, forget which frame it is. Smooth Operator, maybe? Um, yeah, Mark, uh, Mark Spatz is one of the, I feel like he's one of the more head beta flight designers, although maybe there really isn't, I mean, it's a, it's a community fed program, right? So it's like everybody contributes what they can, um, since it's open source and all that goodness. But, uh, yeah, I, I've been talking to Mark a little bit on Facebook. Oh, okay, yeah, this is stripped and it's stuck in here. That is not great. I was stupid to do this, and um, I paid for it. If I can't, I'll probably just leave it, but 
I at least want to try to get a grip on it and remove it. Now this is staying here. And if I need to take this out, it's going to be a bastard. Nope, nope, I got a little grip on it. Let's try this again. Yep, got a little grip on it. Might be turning. If I can just back it out a little bit, I know I can get a good grip on it. And, um, get it out of here. Come on. Yep, it's coming a little bit. Ever so slightly. Come on, grip it. Come on, grip it. Ugh. Do want, not good at tuning. Uh, did I have to learn about the filters the hard way? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting is Betaflight 4 is so good. The presets are so good that um, as long as you pay attention to your build and you build nice and clean and you don't have totally janky motors, props, soft mounting, and shit like that, um, the defaults are so good. I mean, you just don't even have to tune anymore. Very similar to um, KISS and Flight 1. You know, they've always had more aggressive um, out-of-the-box rates, um, whereas Betaflight had sort of out-of-the-box rates that were... Um, more geared towards working on anybody's rig anywhere at any time um, and you know it, it wouldn't fly as good but it would fly and it would collect really good footage but um, on 4.0 here they seem to have really stepped their game up and gone to a filter and PID tune a stock filter and PID tune that um, Flies beautifully. Flies more, much more like a um, a tuned 3.5 setup or 3.4, 3.3, 3.2. Um, when I flew the defaults on 4.0, I couldn't believe it. Like it, it felt like I'd spent 10 batteries tuning it already. And I did then continue to tune it, uh, which has been a joy. I, that sounded sarcastic, but I didn't mean for that to be sarcastic. So this is stuck in here forever, so I'm going to just leave it, and maybe I never need to take the back off again. So, moving on. Let's keep going. Uh, so yeah, the, the stack ended up being Tarsier on the bottom, and I pushed the, uh, the heat sink plate up against the bottom plate. Uh, so in theory, it will pull that into the carbon and use the carbon itself as a... Um, as a heat sink. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and I also, I broke, on purpose, um, I broke the pin header off, because it was the highest point on the top of this Tarsier, which you guys can't see. <laughs> Let's fix that. Um, oh, I have lots of thoughts on 3S versus 4S, EK. Uh, There we go. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, I did that because they give you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Caddx, for doing this. Um, they give you solder pads right next to where that uh, pin header was uh, for everything. Video, um, five volt, ground, all that good stuff, RX, TX, because you can do camera controls. Um, so these little guys, I will put back in the Tarsier bin here, and away we go. Uh, 3S versus 4S, very, very good question. 3S, uh, so I went to 4S because of the KV of the RCX 1304s. RCX 1304s max out at, at 5000 KV, uh, and for me, those motors are the ideal motor for a, um, for a two and a half inch prop. And a two and a half inch prop needs a little bit more KV uh, than it's gonna get from that size. So, uh, that was how I decided on 4S. I think that, um, rewind that. Uh, the 4S batteries come down hot on these 1306 motors. Um, so I would not go to 3S on these 1306s. 
But on a 1304, if you can find one that's like 6,000 KV or 6,500 KV, which I think the Spintex are, I think they do make a 3S variant, um, that's awesome. I, I would actually kind of rather do that um, because 3S is plenty of voltage, in my opinion. Pretty easily, guys. Um, here's the flip side, though. Now you've got, like, I use a, uh, a Bardwell parallel board. Um, so I have a I have the 4S version of it, and uh, using 4S. Sorry guys. Oh my god. Um, using 3S batteries would be a pain because I'd have to have two parallel boards. So it's it's kind of nice. Um, I'm 4S on everything, big and small, and then I can use that same parallel board for the micro batteries and for the full size batteries. I just need I, I just have the little um, XT60 to 30 um, adapters and I can use the same parallel board, which is nice. So that's one of the reasons that I do that. Otherwise, the main decision, like I said, was because of that KV option of 5,000 on the 1504s. Um, what isn't getting hot are the wires. So the next question that someone out there will probably have is, well, why not, if, if your 4S batteries are coming down hot, um, why not go to 5S? The the five the increased voltage will only really gain efficiency if wires are hot. If the battery if if I mean the motor wires won't be really, but mainly if the battery wires are getting hot, that heat is waste. Um, and to get around that, you can raise the voltage and lower the amperage. But the battery wires are not getting hot. The battery is getting hot, and that's fine. Batteries get hot. They actually work well when they get hot up to a point. There's a point of, of diminishing returns where they actually start to fall off because they get too hot, um, but my 4S batteries are not there yet. So I think that, you know, I've found sort of the right combination given the KV of the motors that I want to use. Um, if there were 6,500 KV versions of those, I might consider dropping down to 3S um, to get a little bit bigger of a cell because the 4S batteries that I, that I run are 450 mAh and those cells are kind of small. I would, I would rather have a 3S with like a 650 mAh or a 750 mAh cell because I find that the cells, like 450 for me has been about as low as I've wanted to go on the mAh of, the, of each individual cell in the battery. Um, when the, the mAh gets too small and the cells get too small, they kind of start to act like tiny loop batteries where they sag like absolute hell. Um, just because that cell is so small, and they also don't seem to deal with heat quite as well. Um, so yeah, reasons. And I just noticed that this one, what the fuck is happening here? I don't think I screwed this in all the way. I hope. Otherwise, the screw's too long. It would suck. Because that means I'd have to put another one of these stupid star ones in. So let's back this out. Make sure it's threading properly. And hammer it back home. Alright, there's the click. Let's see. You might have just like caught the edge of the uh, back plate. Yeah, now it looks fine. Okay, yeah, we're good. All right, glad I noticed that. Um, that's a great example on micros. Double check everything. What is up? Dividing by. Um, ideal all up weight. Yeah, 165 to 180 is awesome. Um, it really depends. Uh, my Acrobrat is considerably fatter. Uh, and it gives a different flight experience. It's got considerably more power. Um, so with the extra fatness, just with a five inch, just like with a five inch rig, you know, like a 700 gram five inch rig to a 600 gram, um, the the heavier rig is going to throw farther. Um, it's going to you know maintain its momentum more. Um, it is not going to change directions as quick, and it's not going to be as accurate. So these little guys, these little single camera builds, um, is what I'll call them. Uh, have advantages over the heavier builds, but you know, there. I don't think there's a right answer. I don't think there's a right weight. You know, if, if you want more throw, build heavier. 
Um, if you want more power, build heavier. Um, but for me, I really like that 180-ish, um, 180-ish all-up weight. That is uh, sort of my happy place for micros. Uh, main flyer is on a helio board. Awesome beat up motors kept me crazy for months. Let her place them, but seven months in, stick time leaps and bounds. Yeah, yeah, you'll just keep going, nerdcopter. <laughs> just keep going, man. There's a million little lessons like that that like you just have to kind of learn most of them for yourself. Um, you know, you can pick a lot up by listening to more experienced folks who've been through it talk. Um, but there's an awful lot of stuff that you just kind of have to learn the hard way in this hobby, which is annoying, but uh, hey, we all kind of did it. We all had to go through that. Um, so, the first thing that I need to do, actually, with this Tarsier is get it updated, because apparently updating it after the fact is a real pain in the ass, and I'm going to... Maybe I'm not. I was going to try to leave the, the Wi-Fi antenna off of this thing, um, cause it's kind of just wasted space and, and I just want to set the settings and leave them. Um, but apparently you have to like format the memory card that you're going to use and like you have to do that. Maybe I won't leave this on here. Let me first see how high this thing sticks up. Great. So it becomes the high point. Of course it does. Uh, so the next question becomes, is it going to clear with the stack setup that I've been kind of thinking about? Oh, it looks like it is. It looks like since it's not, it is the high point, but it's against a, uh, it's against kind of a low point on the ESC, so I think we're actually going to be totally fine. Um, buttons are accessible. That's not accessible. Cool, yeah, I think we'll be alright, because this camera's going here. Well, so let's also check that the cable is only not going to yeah, it should be. So, there's going to be the front standoffs. Shit, man, that's going to be tight. Alright, look at it. Um, I'm going to screw the pooch on this one, guys. Nah, that'll be fine. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, until I lay it back. Back, kind of. Um, let's see, let's see. We'll use these mats, which we won't, but just as an example. Oh, no, we're fine. I don't know if we're fine or not. I might have made a mistake. And so here's the problem. If I screw this up, I will get this thing all together, and then these will not reach, and I will stab someone. So like, if I give this 30 degrees up, uh, where's the top plate? Uh, the top plate? So if I give this 20 up, and this stupid SP12 mount is obviously going to come off of here, but... What I'm looking for is to see where this thing is going to sit. Um, Alright, so the top plate is going to sit like this. Right, the top plate's going to sit like that. And then these guys are going to hang out here, but they're going to have some up tilts. This is actually like really important to totally lock this in. Because um, if I screw this up, I will be, I won't know it until like the very late stages. And uh, yeah, I'll just suck. Because I'll have to take all the boards out again. And all the wires will be soldered up. Um, so that just won't be good. Hope you guys are enjoying Anderson Pack right now with Andre 3000. Now we'll get back into the EDMA stuff. Okay, so let's see. 
These are 25 mil standoffs. This is gonna sit here. It's gonna lean back. And I think we're good. I think we're gonna be just fine. Um, I want it to be tight. Um, I need everything to be tight in this build. So, yeah, I think it's worth the, uh, the risk. Worst case in theory, I can run a, um, a camera mount in front that sets it back a little bit farther. The problem with that becomes you start setting it back and now it wants to touch the, uh, the existing stacks that are in there. Um, which is obviously a big problem if it happens. But I think that we're going to be all right. I think that that's plenty of up tilt. So it's got the top camera that kind of can this thing. Fairly clear 25 mil standoffs. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna push on. We're gonna push forward with this. Um, and I think I just learned that I can leave this plugged in. The question is do I leave it plugged in on the inside? Or do I try to route it out? I think I can just like kind of turn this. Is that a Giza? Looks like it's a Giza. Um because if I run it outside, who the hell knows what's gonna happen? Oh, that. Nah, it's running inside. It'll be alright. Um, so I guess I am going to leave this hooked up, uh, which is kind of annoying, but I'm not the end of the world. So let's put this here. And it's going to hang out in the back so that if I do need to change the settings from the application, I can. Now. Uh, I need to get this thing power because I need to update it. Um, Kebab just put out a video last night talking about updating these things. How do you say to do it? Do you put it on the memory card? No, you gotta put the application on and then you hold the wrong button. Um, it's like mislabeled or something. Um, you hold the wrong button to turn the Wi-Fi on and then that'll let you format the card. So, yeah, I actually do need to leave that on, because if I ever want to use a different memory card, um, I'll need this little antenna on here. So, antenna has to stay. Um, I also need to make sure that I get this little guy that holds the... Because um, uh, it goes on the standoffs like this. So let's get this guy in here. Drop us down. Come on. Come on. Yeah. All right. Terrific. Um, that sucks. That's gonna act as a as a spacer on this side. So I'm gonna need to adjust for that. Oh, but it's the Okay, so that's totally fine. Um video ground five volt. Uh I also need to find my Um, I need to, it's going to be one of those annoying parts about this build. Um, so this is the annoying thing about Caddx right now, um, for me. They're, uh, the turtle is like this, and this is like this. It won't take 4S voltage. It won't take full 4S voltage. Um, so I have to use a little voltage regulator on the VBAT. To drop this to drop down to five volts um, or 12 volts uh, but the smallest one here drops it down to five volts which will be fine uh, to power the tarsier 
So, yeah, that sucks, but kind of is what it is. Um, the split will take full f full four S, which is really nice, but they don't have a, uh, a dual setup like this yet. So we'll do what we have to do. I don't. Technically, I could run off of um, a five volt reg on Talon F7, but this is going to pull a lot of juice. Um, so I don't necessarily want to do that. I, I don't necessarily want to pull so hard on the on the regulator on the flight controller um, because that regulator also ha is also going to have to power the receiver and the VTX. Um, so. I want to have the HD board on a separate regulator. Again, since it's going to pull so hard. I could look up the um, the milliwatt, uh, not the milliwatt, I could look up the, essentially how hard this thing pulls, how many milliamps, that's it, how many milliamps this thing pulls, and then compare it to what the, um, the regulators are rated for on the Talon F7. That's what I should do. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. That's far too intelligent. I like to do things the hard way and then regret it. Um, so let's just, let's just solder things. Let's, let's just do things. Um, camera's going to go over here, so let me just orient myself. I usually on my desk put the, hold the frame so that the camera is left for whatever reason. Um, so... I've got them soldered on. Now I need to get the spacers set here. Um, and then I need to check to make sure. So I just realized I added some height um, with this thing that holds the card in. I've added some height to the highest point. So I need to see if that's now hitting anything. I think we should be fine. But, gotta check it. Gotta, 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 gotta check it. So, let's get these guys on here. These little gold bastards are from the, uh, they come with the run cam splits. They are three millimeter threaded um, spacers, basically. And they just happen to be perfect for this. And I've, I've been through like three splits, so I have a bunch of them. I will admit, one of which Runcam graciously uh, replaced since I broke it during the um, Acrobrat prototype testing. But uh, yeah, I'm really hoping that uh, that Runcam has a, a two-cam setup coming out because I really think that uh, it's kind of the answer and it's, and it's really what we want for these guys. Um, because putting a second camera in requires a weird mounting setup, and they're, I've just yet to see one that's really good. Um, and like all the micro frames currently are not built for that. They're all built for the, the single camera setup. So putting the two of them in a single 19 by 19 case, even though this one's 20 tall by 19 width, it's fine. Um, is really ideal, I think. I think that's kind of like going to be the hot setup. So that you can fly through a separate FPV cam, but the HD is separately recorded through a whole separate sensor and lens and everything. Um, so that's good. So I got that going for me. Who else has questions? There's only two people left. Surprise, surprise, right in your eyes. Yeah. Alright, so that's not cranked, but tightened. Um, oh. Gotta check that one's loose. Okay, so that guy is held down. Let's see where the ESC sits with this extra little piece on it that I wasn't planning on being there. Oh, wait, no, I need two. Um, 
These two are boosted up by that plastic piece, but I need to put washers on these ones to bump them up an even amount. These little guys, little one mil washers. Alright, so that will definitely clear, so that's good, because the washer didn't even sit down far enough for it to touch the, um, the little IPEX connector on that odd little uh, Wi-Fi wire. So that's a, that's a good sign. Now let's see how the rest of it stacks up. Ha! Ah, stacks up. And fine on this side. It's close, but totally fine. Check this side. And this side is not as fine. So it's not sitting down. So they're, yeah, they're touching that piece. So what I have been doing to get around this is putting a little blob of hot glue on the end of the um, on the end of the memory card that I attached to the um, to something on here, and I believe that's what I'm going to do again because. The alternative is continuing to, is, is raising up this ESC, and I, I just don't want to do that. I don't think that's the right choice in this case. So I'm going to pull these back off, take this plastic uh, memory card holder inner thing out of here, um, and then we'll continue. So let's get this going. And I'm going to have to break for some food sooner than later here, guys. Um, so if you have questions, get them in now. It's also kind of starting to back uh, back down. There's only two people in here, um, so I don't feel bad ending it um, at some point so that I can go get food. Um, ooh, Serge got back to me. Give me good news, Serge. Please, please, please. Hang on one second, guys. I'm talking to Surge from Power Flip. Sorry. Um, I know this is like the worst thing to do on a stream. Uh, or even um, the dead cat arms. I don't need those either. Awesome. All right. Good news from Surge. Let's finish here. Yeah, I, I've been dragging my feet on this build, admittedly. Um, <laughs> although I can pretty much say that about all builds. I don't know, I just don't like building. <laughs> I really don't. Um, I, I like building like a known quantity. Like I, I like building the same thing. Um, but my god, these... <sighs> I'm, I'm... This is sort of what I get for trying to push uh, the limits on the micros here and, and get something that shoots HD, flies well, flies like a 5 inch, throws well, no jello, all this. Like, it's, there's a reason that you haven't seen it done. Um, and it's not because nobody's tried. I've been trying for a long time. Um, there are problems with trying to do this. Um, there are inherent problems to the um, there are problems inherent to micros mainly in not mainly in the firmware I won't say that um, the firmware is not designed for them that doesn't help um, hopefully I can get some help and, and get some uh, um, get some progress on that working with Mark Spatz like I said um, but the, the micro I mean like, even down to just the micro props, it is way harder to make a tiny little prop well-balanced as a manufacturer 
than a five inch prop. Um, and like, think about the, the quantities too, right? Like, think about how many five inch props are bought. So the the amount they're willing to put into the R and D on on a prop that's that size versus you know this little niche of, of micro props. Um, so like, not only is it physically harder to do it, um, there's less motivation to, to do it for you know a manufacturer that has to make money to stay in business. And we want them to make money, right? We want them to stay in business. Uh, so yeah, it's tough, uh, but we'll get there. Um, Kebab is doing some really, really cool stuff with the toothpick builds. Um, and yeah, we'll just keep pushing to, uh, to figure out what the right combo of parts is and how we can tie the room together and make them all work. Um, little trick, make sure when you're putting these little washers that on next to ESCs that they don't catch the um, uh, they don't catch a FET and not want to sit flat if they do just take a pair of uh, dikes and real carefully cut a flat on the side and you'll be good like that and drop it right back on so there's that let's get that sitting flat nice and pretty so then you just have to make sure that they're rotated right before you put the, uh, the ESC down, which is pretty self-explanatory. How to do that, at least. Not to do it, but how to do it. So keep those in. There's the Wi-Fi antenna. That's going to be fine. Uh, there's that. So on the bottom. All right. So let's go here. And also be careful when you're pushing it down like that that they don't um, don't rotate. Okay, so immediately I'm running into a problem where this won't sit down. I think it's because of the Wi-Fi antenna. Maybe not. Maybe just just rubbing on the threads of the. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's not the Wi-Fi antenna. It just doesn't want to sit flat. What's going on there, little friend? You want to cooperate? There it is. It was just hung up on the threads of the, uh, the jib jet. So there we go. There's the um, the Tarsier and the ESC. Um, that is going to live like that. The ESC is going to live up on top um, of it. Which I just put on wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm hungry. I am hungry and I'm making mistakes, which is kind of standard fare for me. So camera left, I want the battery connector coming out towards me? What the hell? What's the high point? Is the high point the, um, well the high point is the, uh, wow, so I was putting this together wrong the other time. Okay, I'm glad I caught that. So I want. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm. I got it now. We got it. We got there. All right. So on this guy, what's the low point? Uh, yeah. So I want this on there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I had it. All right. I had it. There it sits nice and flat. Okay. Yeah. So there it sits flat with room. I can still get to the buttons. Boop. Boop. Push those. And the other side has the memory card slot and we got a little gap in there. Okay, great. So, uh, the question now is, do I run these and then do it, or I'm going to screw it down. Um, I've been doing that with these little nutties, and then it's going to sit with those guys. So, I'm going to go plastic nuts. Uh, because they cl they do clear the um, the MOSFETs on this ESC. God damn, I'm getting hungry. Hurry up and ask another question so I don't feel bad leaving anybody uh, <laughs> anybody hanging. Ah, EK, yeah, building an exact copy. 
that's uh, that's impossible for me sometimes with how much stuff gets kind of sent to me for testing and whatnot. But that is certainly the way to do it. Certainly, certainly, certainly the way to do it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to get some S uh, some uh, HD footage of this this week. Um, not many people have really gotten. I haven't really seen any Tarsier footage that. Um, it's hard, right? Like it's for me at least. It's it's hard to get a really good feel for it, um, un unless ugh, I feel so bad saying this, but unless it's being flown by like a, a decent pilot, um, and I, I just haven't seen any. Um, any more experienced pilots uh, shredding the Tarsier to really see if... Because once things are moving around and you're doing, you know, snap rolls and stuff like that, a, a perfectly good camera could all of a sudden look like shit. Or, you know, a, a, a camera that you once thought was kind of shitty, once it's moving all around, things like, you know, the bit rate and, and stuff like that being a little bit low, um, sometimes it can become less of a problem once you have some constant motion. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. Um, I was hoping that Bob was going to fly the, uh, the Tarsier, but he just hung it off the side of the car, um, because I know he's super busy. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'll be the first, um, ripper of a pilot to put some time in on it and get an edit done with the Tarsier. Uh, so yeah, that'll be good. Alright, so, uh, I'll actually, I'm just going to leave one nut on there. Just one to, uh, yeah, man. Nerdcopter, thanks for swinging by, man. Very cool of you. Hope you learned something, a thing or two. Um, Alright, see, so yeah, I'm just gonna use one to hold it on. Just makes it easier to solder. I think what I'm gonna do is angle these. So I, I am putting uh, the LED, Pyro Drones LED race wires on this. Um, because I like to punish myself. Also because the the wiring on these motors is not long enough. Um, so I'm actually going to have to put four of them on. But I like to kind of scope out where it's going to sit first. Um, and then take it from there. Yeah, Albert Kim flew the Tarsier. That is true. That is true. So if that's going to be there and this guy's going to be here... So I basically just like to make sure that it's going to be long enough for like the shortest I'm willing to cut the motor wires, and that's that's totally fine. So I mean, if it sits there, these guys can come out and turn this corner. I don't have to cut them down, but that's again totally fine. Yeah, so that gives them plenty of room. So that's completely fine. Um, trying to figure out if I'm going to leave these the length that they currently are, um, or if I'm going to chop them down, or I can also. I like to sometimes turn these guys sideways to shorten them up even more. You know, I might do that. I might do that because I'm going to have a, a mess. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, I'm going to take that nut off again. Who sees the, the mistake that I just made? Oh, man. Oh. I didn't, um, I need to get this cable in there. I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm glad I didn't put off four nuts in. This is what kills me about these tight builds, is like, there's only one way to build them. And like, if you forget anything along the way, you gotta pull the whole thing apart to get back to that point. And it just drives me nuts. Um, which really supports the, what um, EK was just saying. Scope out the build, build it, fly it. If you like it, clone it. Build the same thing over and over again. It'll save you so much headache. And I'm finally there on my five-inch rigs. Um, you know, there's it, it's it's hard to do that, right? Because like immediately when you do that, you're saying, okay, if some piece of tech changes in here, I'm I'm just gonna ignore it. Um, not all the time. Something simple could change, and it could take up the same space. And 
you can just swap it in, but um, yeah, that's kind of the problem with doing that. This wasn't too bad though, I just had this one not on. So no big deal. Who else is in here? I see three people watching. Say hello. Or else. Okay. Now I've got that folded over. Now I can put the um, the thing in the place. The ESC on. And there we have it. All right. Put that nut right back on. And then um, I might take a little break to get some food and sit on the couch for a minute. Oh, let's get back here. Oh, you know, I have that wonderful little tool for this. I often forget that I have this, but this is a little jeweler's, uh, uh, jeweler's flip-flop thing. I don't know, but it's got these little, these little, I don't know, prongs. And it really helps starting these things. It won't screw them all the way down, but it just helps get them started. Um, they're like a couple bucks on Amazon. Uh, forced to beta flight 402 when I had to replace a flight controller. 323 wasn't an option anymore. That's super annoying. But 4.0 is absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah. I was a I was on 3.2.5 on a few rigs until very recently, because um, I just a few micros because I just didn't like the the way the filtering worked. Well, they removed filtering from 3.3 and 3.4 and 3.5, um, which is great for five inch rigs, but um, it was a challenge for micros. Um, I'm of the mind as is Mark Spatz. Um, we've talked about this before, uh, more filtering, if you can run more filtering, it'll allow you to run more degain, and more degain will, um, typically handle prop wash better than less filtering. Um, I'm sure there's a limit to that, and I'm sure there's a point of diminishing returns there, but on the whole... If, uh, if you need the filtering, run the filtering. And then you'll be able to make up for it with uh, more degain. Which will, like I said, in theory, handle. Because, like, here's the thing, right? By the time you need more filtering, like, if, if for some reason your motors are jiggly or notchy or uh, I should say your frame is jiggly or something like that, by the time you start needing to add filtering, that phase delay is kind of set. Like you, you've, you've slowed down that phase delay, and it kind of is what it is at that point. You, you, you've introduced latency. Introducing more latency um, isn't going to be that big of a problem. But um, if you can get a setup that's really clean and, and shut off most of the filtering, that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck, as, as Mark calls it, in terms of latency. Um, if you have to add filtering, um, at that point you're adding that latency, so whatever. Add enough filtering to get the motors cool, and then push the degain harder than you normally would. Is what his recommendation seems to be, um, from what I've seen and heard him talk about. So I'm going to cut it there. Uh, I'm going to go get some food, relax, and then uh, I'm actually going to come back to this. I'm going to do some more work on this tonight. Um, Jamie Ann is coming by. At some point, uh, we might shift over to some five-inch stuff uh, to kind of get her back up in the air with some rigs. Uh, and I have a couple five-inch setups that I do want to build as well. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Hopefully you guys can see me right now. Maybe I'm in the dark. Maybe now you can actually see me. But uh, yeah, we we'll get some food. I'll be back later. I don't know if I'll stream. I don't know if I'll stream, but um, yeah, I'm going to pick this up again later. You know, I will. I'll be back later to stream. Come back and visit me. Thanks for hanging, guys.